Hi, I'm Gary Mendez, and I'm here today with TDA founder and CEO, Goran Dayak. And today we're talking about coronavirus and how businesses are responding to it. Earlier this month, the Internet Advertising Bureau of Europe's chief economist, Daniel Knapp, predicted what he calls an advertising recession as a result of the coronavirus outbreak. So what do you say to the brands and the uh, agencies that are working with brands that are saying maybe they should be stopping their marketing and stopping their spending on marketing? Yeah, I mean, we see it firsthand, right? Um, TDA has five and a half thousand agencies over 120 markets. So we can say we, we can see firsthand examples of that happening and are we getting that reports from both companies and agencies. And I would say, uh, considering everything that's happening and the crisis at hand, it's a normal situation that people immediately start to reflect and stop everything that what they are doing. Uh, but we have to be aware that uh, coronavirus isn't something that's going to be away over the night. And we have to think about maintaining businesses and what will happen after. So it is really important that if we have a steady plan of communication and how we'll handle our marketing activities now and how we'll how we will handle them in the future and how we will adapt to them so it's it's crucial that brands are, i completely understand that brands are now stopping everything that they're doing in in marketing and sales parts but they also have to reflect and they have to be really really um how to best say it they have to be self-aware uh, both to them to their employees and also to their customers and uh, i understand they're scared and everything that's happening but they also need to think about long-term um, effects of everything they're, that they're doing so i would i would say we have to recollect we have to talk to our current existing customers make sure that we know everything um, that is happening uh, is made aware to our customers and that we do it in a, in a proper way. We shouldn't spread, uh, I think, in any way, any type or form of a panic, but also see how we can, as, as companies, produce the best experience still in, in these times to our customers. So I would say um, it's, it's a normal experience. Uh, it's a normal human emotion that you do. Um, but uh, we have to also be strong and think about the, the long-term outcomes uh, out of uh, what's happening today. You mentioned brands not uh, panicking, basically, and not changing their plans uh, in a rash way, but actually making thoughtful decisions. A lot of where that comes from, a lot of what people are seeing in, in the uh, social media can sound like panic. Uh, and it can seem like it was just off the cuff, but also sounds like rash decisions. What do you suggest for brands that are trying to manage their social media through, uh, through these times and how they manage speaking with their consumers via social media? Um, I see two things now. So from my personal experience, I see uh, now brands doing uh, two different uh, things primarily and then we're going to talk about the third thing uh, some of them are doing but let's first address the first two things first and foremost you see one brands that are continuing to communicate normally like nothing is happening which i personally believe is wrong and then you see the second ones who stop all communications altogether and stop communicating at all with with, with everybody with their clients, even with their employees and everything, which is also terribly wrong from my perspective. So uh, let's talk about the third ones and let's talk about um, my personal opinion on this matter and how I would do it. Um, and uh, considering everything that's happening, maybe it would be the most appropriate way. So brands um, also need to stay calm and also need to reflect that staying calm through all of their channels that they're communicating with their customers and now the primary channel of communication is social media so what can we do to first and foremost not get to the angry side of our customers and then at the at the second and the same time not stop stop communicating and not stop doing what we were doing we have to find a balance 
And I think the, the solution is in staying true to the customers that you already have. Make sure that you provide the best service that you can possibly provide with everything that's happening. Of course, some of the businesses like hospitality sector and, and uh, restaurants and everything, food production that is happening are going to suffer and won't be able to continue their business and will have to cancel bookings and everything because of the coronavirus. But here I'm talking more about the other ones who can and need to communicate with their current existing customers. And they should first and foremost address their core customers that are already on their platform, communicating with them or social media. I think we should stop a little bit of, of market, um, let's, say, uh, let's say market acquiring. Um, so slow it down a little bit and focus on the existing customer and make sure that they have the best experience and everything is explained to them. So even if we suffer things, because I see brands doing this um, wrong a lot, is if something happens in the internal processes of stuff like uh, logistics uh, bottlenecks or um, employees um, bottlenecks, we have to make sure that we stay true to our customers and communicate all of those issues that we have in the company that will maybe reflect to their experience. And with that, uh, I think it's crucial to stay and to communicate with the customers. So going back to the first questions and uh, seeing the dip in, in the advertising budgets, I would say um, we should dip the advertising budgets into uh, new market acquirings uh, for the short uh, duration of, of this uh, peak of the crisis that now we're, we are seeing. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we have available budgets and we stay uh, in communication with the current existing customers. And I, I think it's more important than ever because you have to check where those customers are now. So basically they're now staying at home, they're not going anywhere, which means that they're even consuming more of, of uh, digital channels, social media and everything. And I think, um, you, you know, we, we shouldn't minify everything that's, that's currently happening, but also I think we need to provide all the necessary information for those customers outside of just how many people got sick and, and what's happening from the quarantine perspective. I also think we need to take responsibility as brands and communicate other services and other goods that are important for our customers and our customers are expecting from companies to continue providing them. So if, if there's any bottlenecks, which there is likely, we should use social media as the channel and we should use the available digital channels to make sure that we stay at the same level of communication as we were now even more. So, you know, it, it strikes me that um, in the days of content marketing and the real uh, growth of content marketing in particular, brands, companies have become not just selling a product, but also media outlets and to some degree. Uh, and it sounds like what you're saying is they need to think that way, right? They need to think a little bit more outside of just what they make and start thinking about the story that they tell, the information they're passing along. Exactly. Um, I, I, I think in the in the same way uh, how they have to think about more complex and more, let's say, adult way of communication with their customers, they also have to think about at this given moment how to make sure that they reflect on everything that's happening. They make their services more dynamic. They make it more, even more transparent there than they are, even close, standing closer even to the customers than now. And also see if there's a part of the process or, or, or even the whole process that can be digital and that can transform. And by that, basically lowering the risk of their business and also ensuring better quality of the service providing to the customers. So if we're talking about growing up uh, from the perspective of companies, I think uh, we're now talking about someone pushing you really heavily from puberty into adulthood. So we, we, have to, we have to think about businesses also like that. 
um, we can change a uh, situation that is happening currently globally, but what we can do is we can reflect on that, we can react on that, and we can make sure that if something like that happens and when it's happening, that we have even better processes in place and that we are even more resistant both as a company internally and also as a company providing services to the customers. So let's talk about that. That um, I like that sort of transition into adulthood and maturity as a, as a company. Um, is that really is the key to that a digital transformation transitioning into being more of a, a digital company? It's if it was only as simple uh, as you say, it's not that simple for uh, I, I don't think any of the companies. It's a long and, and you know difficult process for all of the companies. For some, it's easier depending on the businesses. For some, it's um, much more difficult, especially for for the traditional companies. Uh, and less transformative companies, but we have to also take a really heavy look into our processes and can we develop new ways of income and can we transform a part of our businesses and grow a part of our businesses from, from traditional into, into digital. And also, I think um, everybody, entrepreneurs, uh, financiers, have to take a close look at uh, how they can make the whole system much more crisis resistant and also standing uh, much more flexible and much more dynamic from the from the perspective of offering services and also from the perspective of standing close to your customers and uh, going back to the beginning of your question uh, adulthood in this um, situation means that when we take a look at a realistic situation, where did people now go to get information? They went to media outlets and primarily they went to social media. And for us, it's both the challenge and also the opportunity in the future to take advantage of that and see how we can transform our businesses that when something happens like this, that we are already there and we are reacting much better than maybe we are reacting now. I'm not saying that people are doing a bad job in any way, no, don't get me wrong. But I'm saying there is for sure a situation where we can now take a look at a real case example and we can use this case example to create something that will be on, on a real, real situation resistant. So on, on one side, it's a terrible thing of what's happening. On the other side, we need to use this as a, as a case study as a way of learning and way of seeing how we can make our businesses stronger. There's a sector that's really finding that they have a unique uh, advantage during this crisis, which is uh, retail and e-commerce. Can you talk a little bit about what sets apart the really smart retailers and how they're using e-commerce? Of course, um, we can see it locally uh, in our country here that uh, retail has been on the slower part of the digital transformation, staying still into brick and mortar stores and not investing so much into going into full e-commerce mode and developing a website which will supply their customers with the goods that they are taking from the brick and mortar. And what is happening now is uh, you have a situation where you have a key player who did that and sees now a heavy increase of their traffic on the site, on the number of orders that people are doing. And now you see uh, onboardings of new users that you wouldn't see going so in a, in a let's say, aggressive manner from traditional into digital, which is pretty interesting when you, when you think about it, because now you have people who would not think about ordering you know their milk and their produce online and they're now thinking and doing that because the situation forced them to do that and i would say even if if the crisis stops tomorrow you will now have a new source of customers who is now fully digitized and who is staying true through the to the experience they had and now you have people ordering their food and their produce online and not going into brick and mortar. 
And with this, you already see a transformation of, of a traditional, heavily traditional um, part of the industry going digital. And I, I would say that uh, this push from everything that we're seeing on our own hands is now uh, really interesting because uh, they're breaking all records in, in orders. Uh, on the other side, you can see uh, food delivery services such as Vault and uh, general delivery services such as Globo also prospecting from this situation. Not saying they're taking advantage of the situation, but just providing a solution for people who don't want to leave their homes and still want to get you know, food delivered, they still want to get post delivered and everything else they need. Medication for elderly. And I think personally, this is awesome because now you're going to transform uh, first and foremost people who are less technologically advanced, such as uh, older people. And at the same time, you're going to see people who are resistant and not really trying to dip their fingers into digital now having to go to digital. So um, it's an interesting situation for businesses. And I would say uh, it's, a, it's a, again, excellent case study for all the businesses that can have an e-commerce store that can provide their goods and services over online and over, over websites, over applications and over um, e-commerce stores. Uh, I think, uh, again, now they should take a look at everything that's happening and they should take a look at use case examples from the market and they should think about it and take advantage of it as soon as possible. Uh, because now I think uh, from all the unfortunate of, of the virus, staying home and everything, now you have more time to think about um, how to make your business more resistant, how to make your business going back through the, to the old uh, path as soon as possible, and even how to make your business growing even more than before the coronavirus. And uh, I think uh, now um, this situation has also pushed people to think about digital and has also provided more chances for uh, all the entrepreneurs who already have uh, set up e-commerce stores, uh, developed uh, web services and also application services. Uh, and on the on the other side, we can also see not only talking about retail, we can talk about education also. Um, schools closing, all the kids moving to online uh, education. What is this? This is a future user of online education in general. So if we teach our kids how to consume and how to work and how to be productive over online, we can see future generations that will use that not because it's a must, but because it's an option. It's, it's going to be the preferred option. And not only to our kids, we are also talking to adults who now have to go either to colleges or adults who want to further their education. Now, have, now they have one more reason to take online classes and we will also see uh, traditional schools now trying to find a model where they go online. So we, we are getting now a lot of real case examples of, of people, institution, governments going digital. Do you see that change in consumer behavior? We talked about how that then sets people up for a more more permanent change. Uh, as young people start driving that change, as elderly people start driving that change, do you think the middle of the market will actually keep pace or will we end up being the ones who follow more than the, the trendsetters at, at the older age and younger age? I would say definitely we're going to start to follow because of the youngsters that are coming up who live their life fully on digital. And I think we were still the older generation that lived through offline and online at the same time. So I would say we're gonna <laughs> see the back end of it either way. Uh, but uh, what's interesting, you have now my grandma who is daily on Facebook and who is consuming daily Facebook, posting posts, uh, being active, sharing her opinion, consuming news through social media. Which is, which is amazing for a 70-year-old person, you know? 
Um, and, and now when people say, yeah, there's no chance that elderly would even have the opportunity to go to digital, I see in, in my, you know, in my house, in, in my family, I see that that's not the truth. And my grandma came from like a really traditional, she wasn't, you know, working on computers. She was a cleaning lady, you know, and she as a cleaning lady adapted this new technology now uses a tablet and consumes most of her stuff because of her limited availability to move and everything that, you know, average age and everything. But she also transformed to digital and she's not only the user of digital, she's also the consumer of digital because now she calls me and says, grandson, hey, I saw these ladders that I need for my house and can you go and order me the, the ladders online? Or even she sends me a link for that stuff that I have to order. So we see not only change happening in, as you said, in the middle section of, of people, we see it happening from, from the super young age, from three and four year olds who now say and can order stuff online all the way to el el elderly people who are now looking, consuming, ordering and doing everything that we're doing on social media. And I, I can also say on my example, they, they might be a little bit slower, but the time that they spend, they have more time, basically equalizes that, you know, that gap in technological knowledge. So actually they, they can be at the same level digitized as, as young people or, or let's say um, our generation people, which is, which is super interesting, you know. Goran, what's your final sort of wrap up piece of advice for someone on the company side who needs to uh, transform their business digitally? I would definitely say um, to all of the entrepreneurs that are out there now and scratching their heads and uh, thinking about how to survive this, um, a few messages and definitely one of them should be stay true to your existing customers, make sure that they have the best possible experience don't get scared easily make sure that you stay true to the brand you are and through the service and, and the goods that you offer the second thing is use this time um, that you have now with everything that's happening to think about what your business can do to go digital how it can go digital and if it can't can you produce something to enable it to go to digital and then don't stop at the plan make sure that you do it make sure that you invest the time for it and um, i think the biggest mistake would be once um, this all finishes that we forget about it so we have to stay true to everything that we learned now and make sure that we start reacting in a much much faster and dynamic way so that would be uh, my few things that I would propose to businesses um, and I would say this message is not only for businesses I would say this business is, uh, this uh, opinion is uh, for both governments also and the investors also so I, I think uh, we all need to reflect on this take a really close look and make sure that we follow the advices and uh, the things that we learned now.